Real Deal Sports Talk with KP. It is Saturday, September 30th, 2017. The Colorado Rockies have made the playoffs. And we are here to talk sports. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. I appreciate it. Uh, Today on the show, we will be going over my week four predictions, uh, a little bit of the the Major League Baseball playoff picture. As I just mentioned, the Colorado Rockies are the 10th and final team into the playoff picture this season. Uh, We'll get into that here in a little bit. And also, um, I had planned on doing something today around amateur athletics with the news breaking, with the college thing this week, and then... um, I also got the privilege of watching some amateur athletics this week on the high school level and little league level. So it just got my mind working. Um, We're going to get real about that at the end of the show as well. But let's go ahead. We'll jump into it. We'll get going with this week's show. Um, Again, this is Real Deal Sports Talk with KP. You can check us out on Facebook, uh, Real Deal Sports Talk with KP. You can follow us on Twitter, at Real Deal KVP. Uh, We got a Google Plus community you can search for by the same name, Real Deal Sports Talk with KP. You can email the show at uh, rdst.wkp at gmail.com. So many ways to reach out to us. If you ever, you know, want to get your opinion on the show, if you want to tell me how I'm wrong, um, if you take issue with something I say on the show, please reach out. That's what it's about. This is Sports Talk. I welcome all comers. Uh, Maybe I'll even get you on air if what you have to say has some merit. All right, moving on. Let's get into my week four predictions. Um, One game has already been played. I did take Green Bay to beat Chicago in that game, as I have Aaron Rodgers as a fantasy quarterback. Um, And the Packers did beat the Bears 35-14 on Thursday night. So I'm 1-0 on the week. We'll see how the rest of my picks go. Um, I do have to touch on the Danny Trevathan hit on Devontae Adams real quick, as this is something I I spent some time communicating and debating and basically a little arguing with uh, people this week since Thursday over whether or not this was a dirty play. Uh, My take is this. Yes, it was dirty. Do I think Danny Trevathan is a dirty player? No, I do not. I think that play was reckless. And playing reckless made that a dirty play. I understand what he was trying to do. I understand why he was trying to do it. I understand what he was taught to do. You clean up the pile. You take the player down. He's still standing up. The whistle has not been blown. You play fast. You play hard. You play aggressive. That's all well and fine. No, at no point, at no point in his playing career has he been taught to put his head down and lead with the crown of his helmet to do that action. In my opinion, this was not a case of the the carrier, ball carrier, came down to where the hit was going to be and you caught him in the head. This was you put your head down and you attempted to come in as a torpedo. Now, I expected him to get some kind of discipline, uh, maybe even up to a game suspension. So the news breaking today that he was going to be suspended for two games, um, I'm not so sure about that. We'll see if that actually ends up happening or not. Um, I'm glad to hear that Devontae Adams is back at home. Uh, He tweeted out that he is at home, and he's thankful for all the prayers everybody sent his way. So, uh, thankfully, Devontae Adams is okay. Um, And again, I do not think Danny Trevathan is a dirty player, but that reckless play was dirty, period. When you play the game reckless, when you play this game specifically reckless, at any point, Not only are you putting yourself at risk, you're putting the other people on that field at risk. That's dirty. That's wrong. You've got to stay focused. You've got to be professional. You've got to be better than that. And we're going to talk about that a little bit why here when we get to the Little League section of the show, portion of the show. Um, Moving on, other picks. Let's go with the early game, the Saints at the Dolphins, uh, 9.30 in the morning. We all know this is taking place overseas. Um... God, this is a tough one because it really could go either way. If the Dolphins show up, they have enough talent to score on this Saints defense, right? 
Now the Saints got Drew Brees. We know how they can distribute the ball. We know what they have as far as weapons in their backfield and Mike Thomas and um, Fleener and different guys they got going on there. I'm going to go ahead. I'm taking the Saints. I'm going with Drew Brees. I don't really have faith in the Dolphins right now. They're not playing good on offense. They're not playing good on defense. I'm going to go with the Saints to beat the Dolphins in the early game. I'm going to take the Titans over the Texans. The Jaguars, can we talk about how the Jaguars are playing right now? Mistake-free. Relatively mistake-free. Not needing a whole lot from that offense. The defense is balling out. That The talent is showing up. They are making mistakes, but not enough to overcome what they're doing on that side of the ball. Calais Campbell has been a huge, huge addition to that team. The leadership, the discipline that he has brought. They are taking on the Jets. I will take the Jaguars to go past the Jets in this game. Panthers are taking on the Patriots. I will take the Patriots at home to beat the Panthers. Um, Cam Newton is showing himself to be exactly who I have said he is on this show. He is extremely athletic. He is big. He has a strong arm. But he is not a multi-read quarterback. He does not like to throw the ball short. Losing Greg Olson was a huge problem for that offense. Calvin Benjamin has been inconsistent at best and hurt. And I mean, you're getting a lot out of the rookie there in McCaffrey, which I thought you would. I thought the Panthers with that addition, and I said if he was able to figure out how to throw the short ball, they'd be something to mess with. I thought they'd push in that division. I thought they might win that division behind the play of Christian McCaffrey. But right now, it's just not there for the Panthers. And the defense is playing much better than I expected, honestly. Uh, even the secondary is doing much better than I expected um, from the Panthers this year. But again, I'll take the Patriots at home. I'm going to take the, my Lions on the road, obviously, to beat the Vikings this week. Uh, Buffalo at the Falcons. This could be a fun game. This could be a fun game. Does Buffalo build off the confidence they got from beating the Broncos last week? Does Atlanta struggle at all this week mentally knowing that Detroit almost put it to them? Had it not been for a controversial call at best, who knows how that game ends. So this is going to be a fun one. Buffalo's got a stout defense. Atlanta under Starkeesian really on offense likes to run the ball to set up the pass. Julio Jones hurt his back last week. Um, I am going to go ahead and take the Falcons in this. I think there's just too many weapons there. Uh, I'll take the Falcons at home to beat Buffalo. But I do think this might be one of the better games or closer games this week out of all of them. I'm going to take the Steelers to beat the Ravens on the road um, at Baltimore. Haven't been impressed with Baltimore. Didn't think they were going to do much this season. Um, and the Steelers are... I'm still expecting more out of them, I guess. So I'll take the Steelers on the road to beat the Ravens. Bengals at Browns. I'm going to go ahead and take the Browns in this one. Like I said prior to the season, the Bengals, you got all the talent in the world, but you got to prove something. And right now, they're still not proving anything. Andy Dalton is not taking steps forward. And I don't think it's because, again, they have the talent. The coaching has not been there. They are not coaching these guys up. They're not using a system that takes advantage of the skills that these guys have. Um, who knows what it is. But the mix is not right there in Cincinnati. Too much talent. I'm going to take the Browns to get a win in this one in a close game. Big upset for Cleveland at home. Rams at the Cowboys. The Rams are riding high. A lot of confidence. They think they are the schniznit right now with the points they're putting up but I will take the Cowboys to uh, beat up the LA Rams this week at home in Jerry's world Chargers and Eagles the Eagles are at the LA Chargers this week I will take the Eagles to beat the Chargers in a close one as that's just the Chargers style that's what they do they lose close games so I'll take the Eagles and Carson Wentz to beat the Chargers who just find a way to lose games in the first afternoon game. The Giants at the Bucks. Both of these teams I've expected more out of this season. The Bucks, they completely folded last week. The Giants offensive line 
should be given their paychecks back right now. Uh, non-existent running game. The defense has not lived up to what I thought it would be there in New York. The offense for the Buccaneers really hasn't taken off the way I thought it would. Now, Doug Martin has been out. He is still suspended. Maybe it takes off a little more when he comes back. Uh, we'll have to see by then who knows where the Bucks will be. They could be 500. They could be below 500. But Giants at Bucks. Giants, no offensive line. Uh, um, I'll go Bucks at home. Home team advantage. So you got to pick somebody. I'll take the Bucks to go ahead, bounce back from last week, and beat the Giants, um, who are just struggling this season. 49ers at Cardinals. I got to imagine the Cardinals can win this game at home against the 49ers, who are, I mean, I'll give them credit. They're competing in every game, but um, I don't know how many games they're actually going to win this first year under the new regime. Uh, big afternoon game. Could be a huge game in the AFC West. Raiders at the Broncos here in Denver, Colorado. Uh, I'm going to take the Broncos in this one. Uh, it, it, most likely just rumors and fake news, but the idea that it's been put out there that the Raiders line uh, maybe let Derek Carr get sacked because he didn't kneel for the, the National Anthem protest. Just that idea being out there, having that be in the back of the players' heads, couldn't mess with them enough this week. Khalil Mack has made a career off of rushing the Denver Broncos quarterbacks, and he knows Menelik Watson very well coming over from Oakland. So expect Khalil Mack to have a big game this week. But I don't know that it's going to be enough. I'll take the Broncos in a close one to beat the Raiders and move into um, second place solely behind the Chiefs in the division. Uh, moving on after that Sunday night game, I will take the Seahawks all over the Colts. And the Monday night game, I'll take the Chiefs to beat the Redskins. Um, as the Redskins are inconsistent at best, let's face it. All right, let's get into some baseball playoffs. As I started off the show with, just shortly before we started tonight, uh, the St. Louis Cardinals knocked off the Brewers, coming from behind to beat them 7-6, to six, knocking the Brewers out of the playoffs. Um, only thing you can do as a division rival when you have nothing to play for is to try and keep your division rival from making the playoffs. So good job there for you know St. Louis finding something to play for here at the end of the season and um, congratulations to the Colorado Rockies for being the 10th team to make it into this year's tournament. Now I say that but at the same time we call it a wild card game. That's the terminology that's been assigned to it. What I would like to see is that to be a three game series. Best two out of three. Because right now honestly what it is it's a play in game. You're, you're playing in for a chance to be the fourth seed, to, to face the number one seed. That's what you're doing. It's a playing game. It's the same thing that, uh, let me see, how do I phrase this so they don't try and come after me for using their terms. The, the basketball games that take place in succession in the third month of each year that determine the champion of the amateur collegiate. Did, did I cover it right? It's the same thing they do now. They have the play-in game. Um, so, playoffs are set. All te 10 teams are in. Um, there might be a little shifting on some position. I mean, Cleveland and Houston, uh, they're still looking like, um, let's see, they have a game each left, and Cleveland has a one-game lead on Houston as far as the best record in the American League, so there could still be some positioning shuffling, but as far as it goes right now, the teams in this year's playoffs for baseball, you have the Red Sox, the Indians, and the Astros on the American League side as the division winners. And then as your wild card, your play-in game, you have the Yankees taking on the Twins. Um, 
again, who gets number one after the weekend's over, we'll see. Right now it looks like Cleveland's going to go ahead and get that n number one overall seed, which would pin Houston against Boston in the first round and the winner of the play-in game facing Cleveland right now. On the National League side, you have the division winners of the Washington Nationals, Chicago Cubs, and the Los Angeles Dodgers, with your wild card play-in teams being also from the West, the Arizona Diamondbacks and the Colorado Rockies. So the Rockies are going to take on the Diamondbacks in that one game wild card play-in, so they have the right to go on and face the L.A. Dodgers in the first round of the playoffs, while the Cubs will take on the Nationals. Now, currently, the Rockies are finishing up this season with a three-game set against the Dodgers. They beat them last night. They're taking on Kershaw tonight, and they have one more game, I believe, against them tomorrow um, before they will travel to Arizona for that play-in game. And that's the playoffs right now. Uh, I'm not going to make predictions this week. I will make predictions for the playoffs after the play-in games and the series are set. Um, so look forward to that on next week's show. Now, this is the part of the show we're going to get a little serious. Um, it's not going to be really political. We've had to deal with that uh, a little too much, so we're going to bypass that kind of stuff this week. But um, amateur and little league sports. This is something that's played uh, a big role in my life. Uh, it's my playing career ended in amateur sports. Um, after I was in a bad car accident and wasn't able to uh, continue on the way I wanted to or with the ability that I needed to. Um, but this week with the breaking news um, that the FBI had arrested uh, four college coaches, that they were investigating uh, other schools, that Rick Pitino was somehow involved, um, the University of Louisville, the the news dropping that they've uh, subpoenaed one of the youth basketball leagues that Nike runs. Um, it just got me thinking about amateur athletics and where amateur athletics have come, um, what they're supposed to mean, what they're about, what sports are supposed to provide and give to you, and almost what they've become. And It's hard for me because I, I grew up playing every sport I could. I played basketball, baseball, football, I played soccer at school, I was on a swim team. I, I was in sports year round. I was exposed to sports. My father grew up playing sports. My grandfather was a coach for many, many years. Um, sports is who I am. It's what I love. It's what I identify with. And the more these stories break, the more you hear of the corruption, um, it just makes you think. What's it all about? What, what should the kids be getting? Um, should it be about winning? Is winning that important to us? I know it feels good to win, but that should not be the most important thing. It should not be about winning. Um, the list goes on and on and on of things that you can get out of sports. Uh, teamwork, respect, you learn hard work, loyalty, you learn trust, you get friendship, you build confidence and self-esteem, you get, of course, the health benefit of the exercise, you learn selflessness, how to give to somebody else. You learn to fail and to get back up, to not ever quit. You have fun. You learn discipline. You learn how to prioritize your life, be, find that balance between life, uh, um, education, and athletics. Uh, you learn how to set goals and achieve goals and work towards goals. You learn communication skills and problem solving. You learn honor, critical thinking, uh, strategy, sportsmanship, integrity. It, you get so much out of being part of a team, out of being and participating in youth sports and amateur athletics and having that be part of your life. These are skills that cross over into other aspects of life. These are things that these kids need to be getting out of sports. It should not be the AA, in my opinion, again, this is my opinion, this is my take on it, this is, these are my thoughts about it. This is how I feel about growing up and having now 25 plus years around athletics, me personally. 
covering it, watching it, participating in it. And what I see is winning. I see people focusing on winning. I see the pressure to be the best, to go pro, um, to become basically an asset in a capitalistic professional system, to be rich, to somehow better your whole family situation, and this is the only means to do that. And that's not what sports is. That's not what I fell in love with when I fell in love with athletics, when I fell in love with baseball and basketball and football. That's not what I got out, get out of it. That's not what I was in it for. I never wanted, my dream was never to be rich. I dreamed of winning the championships, of being on the team, of playing the game. The excitement, the lows. I was on a baseball team that for years was close. A lot of good players on the team. I wasn't one of the better ones. For a lot of years we were close. One year we finally won the championship. I broke down crying. It meant so much to me. I was on the ground, on the diamond, dirt in my face. Couldn't believe we finally broke through. It meant so much to me. Not just because we win him, but because we finally we got over that hurdle. We had reached the mountaintop. We had worked and worked and worked. And finally, we achieved that ultimate goal. And that's why it meant so much. Not just because we won. It wasn't superficial. It makes me wonder what happened to the purity of amateur athletics. Of college. Of, of high school. Of football. Of, I mean, of Little League. How did we let them fall victim to, to AAUs, to traveling teams, to letting competition come before sportsmanship? Corruption. That's what it is. And I wonder, has it always been like this? Is this always something that's been a part of youth athletics? This idea that I'm going to pay for a player, that I'm, I'm going to recruit this guy um, by any means necessary. Part of me feels like, yes, that's exactly what it is. Part of me wants to believe in the sanctity and the purity of athletics and of sports. And I talk to people all the time, and they're like, oh, you know, KP, I only watch the college game. I can't stand the pros anymore. I can't watch them. It's become too business. It's become too this, it's become too that. There's too many of these, there's too many of those. Talk to other people, oh, I don't even deal with the college game no more. What they're doing to those kids is wrong, making all that money off of them. I only watch the high school game, KP. Then I talk to other people and they're like, man, all of this stuff is hurting Little League so bad. And it starts with the pros. Unfortunately, that is their role in athletics. That is how they are role models. These teams need to be given back more. They do a lot. They do more than I'm able to as an individual. But it, it, it's on them to step up, to put technique first, to put quality of, of person first, to market the good that is in sports. Not just to market sports to make money. That, that was Beans. You guys have all heard her before on the show. A uh, little dog running around. She hears something outside. Um, but man, I, I love it. I love amateur sports. I love Little League and what all of that brings. Um, it's why I enjoyed so much the last couple of days um, watching, I watched a high school game. I watched Cherry Creek take on Valor Christian, and I watched a Little League game. I went out and checked out my boy Jonathan Rubio's team, the Lakewood Tigers, as they took on the Arvada Regulators today. Um, watching the high school game this week, it took me back. They were playing sound football. They were playing technical football. There was very little showboating. Um, two quality teams. Valor Christian pulled it out 26-14 at the end. Um, but quality football here in the state of Colorado on the high school level. Quality coaches. Um, you didn't see a whole lot of negativity on their sidelines. 
You saw guys being coached up. You saw guys playing hard. You saw guys uh, picking each other up. You saw each other, them encouraging each other. You saw them being a team. You saw them being a community. You saw them being a brotherhood. Um, I really enjoyed watching that game. It took me back and it gave me a lot of memories of when I played and I, I really liked it. Then this morning I went out and I watched the Lakewood Tigers take on the Arvada Regulators at the fourth grade level of the, um, let me see if I get this right, the Jefferson County Midget Football Association. Um, and, you know, it wasn't technically sound. These are nine-year-old kids. Um, the Regulators won the game over my, 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 my buddy's team, the Tigers. Um, but it was fun to see the kids play. It was fun to see um, the little athletes within the group. It was fun to see um, how they reacted to the game and how they were enjoying the game. What was not fun to see was how the head coach of the Arve Arvada Regulators acted during the game. And that's where we're going to get real. So I like to think that between my experience with the game, my father's experience, and my grandfather's experience with the game, which is almost 130 years combined of football experience between the three of us, that I have a strong enough background to speak with some, with some conviction on what I'm about to say. Um, what I saw from the head coach of the fourth grade Arvada Regulators today on the sideline was unacceptable in my opinion for a youth football coach. The way he was yelling at his players, uh, belittled them, made fun of them by mocking less intelligent people, duh, duh, duh. not cool, not okay. Um, and I don't know what it was supposed to do. I don't know if he was trying to inspire them, get them to want to play harder. Um, but I would say, how about you coach them up? How about you give them a little coaching? That is your title, coach. You're not out there to make fun of kids or to publicly yell so loud that you're clearly not doing anything but pointing out what your players did wrong. Not to mention the times he chose to yell towards the other sideline and insult them. Way to go, coach. You showed your players how to be a great person today. You're teaching the kids exactly how to be a poor sport. You put winning in front of the well-being of the kids you have been entrusted to lead. And to the parents who allow it to happen as if it is okay, or somehow this is just how it is in football, I am embarrassed for you, and I feel for your kids. There is, there is a big difference between being a hard-nosed football coach and being an ass. Now the JMFA has rules for this, and I hope they are applied. I hope he is dealt with, and he should not be working with kids or coaching a game I love the wrong way for what I feel are in the wrong reasons. Now, the JMFA, they have an honor and integrity program where the players, the coaches, the spectators are all graded. They're given points. If they don't meet a certain total, they are called into the league offices and dealt with. They can be suspended. They can forfeit games. Uh, they can be removed from the team in the league. And I am so impressed that they, this league has that in place. That shows me that the league is on top of the kids coming first. I love that. I love it. I love it. I love it. And again, I say this is kids. It's kids. I applaud the Lakewood Tigers coaches for not responding to the regulators coach in any way. Now, did the Tigers coach also show frustration? Sure, it's an athletic event. Coaches get frustrated. Did they get loud? Yes, they did. But the tone was completely different. The words being used were different. And the direction of the frustration was different. There was no embarrassment or belittling. There was coaching up. When the coach got upset, he walked away. He talked to himself. He did not yell to his players about how disappointed he was in them. 
Amateur athletics and little league sports are one of the best things this country still has to offer. It has been s sad to see how much they have been infected by the greed of adults looking to make money and or get rich off of their kids or other people's kids. I value all of the aspects of what sports gave me, taught me, and offer to all those who are in them for the right reasons and who truly love the games they play. With that being said, y'all know how we do. Until next time, be real.